So while all the guys that are fading because they were pumping up for 35 minutes before, uh, you're going to be getting sharper. It's I, it's every fucking time. Every time. I'll see guys, my guys get moved to the, <laughs> they're here, and then the guy in the middle fades, and my guy goes, bloop, there you go. You win. Congratulations. Mario style on top yeah, of Yeah, just ass. literally jumps over everybody, and he's a turtle, turns into a turtle shell, explodes, and that's it. The guy dies right there on stage. That better be like the first thing <laughs> Scott, the video guy, puts into the, <laughs> this better be the first thing we talk about. Hey, folks. Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization with RP's head of the Competitive Physique Division, Jared Feather, IFBB Pro. Mm. And he is dying of some kind of some kind of disease. He looks real not so well. Yeah. But we got him to stay upright for long enough, weekend at Bernie style, to answer some interesting questions and a chat a little bit about. The natural peaking process. So I have a couple questions for you. What are your general principles for a natty peak? You got an athlete coming in. How many uh, folks uh, have you worked with natty for their pro pro cards? Quite a few. Uh, peaked quite a few natural pros themselves just for their peak week process in general. And then also have turned quite a few people pro naturally. Also continued to work with them and done, ran their peaking processes. But basically, and you were a natural pro as well. And I was a natural pro myself, yeah. So I'm very familiar with the process of peaking for a show. So basically, for those of you that don't know, peaking is really just the – we're saying that we're trying to look our best at a certain point in time. Obviously, that time is – we want to be peaked on stage, our peak – not performance in this case, but it's our peak physique. So that is somewhat of a combination of three things. You could say it's to basically fill out intramuscular uh, glycogen storage to reduce the total amount of extracellular fluid that we may see in a person, so mostly subcutaneous. And then also to kind of keep their uh, waistline pretty sharp and not uh, overdo it with the carbohydrates or food the day before the contest or the day of the contest, so that way they can actually kind of have a smaller waistline, they can pose on stage, things of that nature. So that really is kind of what a peaked physique really looks like. And you heard terms like conditioned, dry, full. Um, those are all things- Grainy. That, grainy, people are pretending, just basically they're really saying this person looked really good on stage and they looked peaked. All right. So that's the peak, what a peak is. How about just for a second? We go back and forth to each other at a show, complimenting our oh, I love physiques. It. Let's, let's do it, but like, you better use some interesting terms. Are we watching? They're they're like on the stage. Um, we we're no, no, we're, we're competitors oh, right on, backstage. Right, right. And like, yeah. dude, you're looking fucking dice, bro. Dude, yo, yeah, bro, thanks, man. I had like tilapia just like for yeah. for like five weeks. Yeah, man. it was fish. like so it's skin. Uh, real it just thin. thins it out, man. Thins it out. No water under here, man. Old school. Yeah, yeah. You look. Uh, Hey, coach, how many carbs did you eat yesterday? Fucking a thousand grams. A thousand grams yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. a thousand. Today, yeah, zero. Man, definitely looking full. Maybe yeah. a little flat across the chest. Flat across. I knew it, man. But, My but, chest always flattens out. Yeah, man. Maybe you get a new coach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my coach is my dad and, and my best friend. Same person. Damn, that's sad. <laughs> and I'll fire him. I hate my dad. Listen, man. He's uh, your best friend. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Him. Listen, uh, you're looking uh, you're looking peeled out, man. Yeah, man. You have great glute striations. Lines going all the way up the back all of your ass. All the way ass. up the asshole. All the way up into you your look, lats. You know what you got, bro? You got oh, fucking God. 90s conditioning. Fuck. You're yeah, like, like Sean. 720p conditioning. Yeah, yeah. yeah You're like yeah. Sean Lavrone yeah. yeah. or like Chris Coleman or one of those guys. <laughs> You're fucking great. Man. great. You're looking sharp, man. I appreciate it. But it's that I te So let me you tell you. You're going to rant about the 90s conditioning shit. Let's we'll save that for a second. Yeah. A few more, a few more. Okay. You look. Um, it looks like you got some, like your density is really like high. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. You must look like really heavy because you're pretty dense too. Bro, I'm telling you, you're telling these new school cats. Yeah, and you're hard. Like I'm not that hard. Hard. I'm not that you got to be hard. I'm not. It's like, see? You could be dense. It's like there, but it's like not you hard. You got to go like, heavy, bro. You got to go fuck heavy. Fuck it's garage. Fuck. It's a garage mentality. I knew it, man. Garage gym. Branch. Pig iron. <laughs> slag iron. I, I don't even use slag machines. Iron. I don't use weights. I use bricks. <laughs> Pieces of like old busted up trains. Right. right on. Dorian did that too, I think. Dorian didn't even train. He just yelled. I knew it. That's how fucking hardcore he was. <laughs> you ever yelled a failure, bro? Uh-uh. Maybe at a concert or something. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, what do I do with my, we'll just go nutrient by nutrient. Yeah, yeah. Protein. How does it change through the week of peaking, including into the show? Uh, well, like, Intake and source. Like I said, everybody knows what peaking is now. So uh, I do want to add one more caveat here. Peaking is a process that people get carried away with. Um, if you look really good a week out, there's not a ton of manipulation you should do. But I'm not one of those zealots that also says just go into the show. Uh, peaking can definitely enhance the appearance of your physique. I'm going to quantify it. Obviously, it's hard to quantify by 5% going into the show. You can look 5% better if you're extremely conditioned and you are a flat, natural competitor from Monday to Saturday of the show. You can look 5% better. It's a thing. Peaking is a thing. <laughs> uh, that being said, don't try a bunch of crazy shit and uh, ruin your physique uh, leading into the show. You should have some practice peaks through the prep and things of that nature. So with that being said, protein first. Uh, it's relatively consistent. Some people do have uh, GI distension or bloating-ish from certain protein sources. And because of that, I tend to lower the protein the days of the carbohydrate load because you're going to be hypercaloric. You're not going to lose lean tissue in this process. You're actually probably going to gain back some lost lean tissue during the carbohydrate load. So the protein is reduced by like 25% uh, just to keep the GI kind of. So like a gram per pound just below that sort of. Right, yeah. Right. It basically just goes down to normal or slightly below normal. Any special protein sources you like people to stick with? or Sources that they have eaten nonsense? through the prep that uh, they seem to agree with. A lot of people have make-believe scenarios in their head where they're like, I'm real bloated with like this and that, and I, I don't ever see it, but I'm just to make them happy. It's like, okay, well, then pull the egg whites. You don't like the egg whites. Pull them out. Like, I feel like egg whites bloat me, bro. Right. I've, you know, you hear shit like that all the time. And just to keep some competitors happy, sometimes they think they know better than the coach or they – they do like they see these like placebo effects, uh, you know, just work with the client. Right. If they want just chicken that entire time, whatever, have it. <laughs> what about duck? <laughs> Some of them like duck. I've had clients who like duck. Uh, Caviar. Oh, God, I don't know. Actually. My only protein source for peaking is champagne. Ch champagne. I like to celebrate source. early, baby. I'm already a winner. I don't know it's proteins and champagne, but. Enough. Carbs. What do you do with carbs throughout the week? Is there like a, do you do the depletion? Do you do the ramp? Do you do the one or two day carb up? Yeah. So it really depends on the person. Again, I, I mentioned that if you're insanely conditioned, these things can look, make you look significantly better. If you're somebody who like is doing a warm up show or somebody who's doing the first ever show and you're not as conditioned as you could be, um, less is almost more in every circumstance, mm -hmm. uh, slight, unless it's like, you know, uh, maybe, play with the water a little bit. Uh, people are generally, you wake up every morning in that stage of prep and you're like, ooh, new veins, ooh, new this, new that. So generally- New veins, who dis. New, new veins, who dis. So keeping their carbohydrates and stuff like that consistent and their water consistent is a good idea. But um, the general outline for a natural person would really just to be, uh, try some form of a quote unquote depletion. And during that time, if you are just completely shredded to the bone, you could also try a triglyceride intramuscular triglyceride storage kind of ramp up if you would like. So a lot of coaches are starting to do that as well. And there's a really good peaking paper by Dr. Scott Stevenson, I believe Schoenfeld and Alan Aragon wrote the forward on that. And then there were like Chris Barricat was on it. A bunch of other guys that we all know really well. Um, I don't know who the fuck I am. <laughs> oh. Coming for you guys. I actually don't know who Chris Barricat is. I've heard the name my whole life, and he has a really cool last name. Yeah, he's a, he's a good like dude. I believe, awesome he's out, I believe he's out of Florida. I, I met him uh, when Marvin won his pro card, actually. He's a good dude. But uh, super nice. Um, but him and a bunch of other guys wrote that paper uh, out of Florida, I believe. Scott Stevenson. Uh, very, very in-depth analysis of what you should do with all this stuff. So if you'd like more detail, you can go find that study. It's free. It's online. Um, but... Really, you can ramp up the fats, just basically taking your calories to maintenance if you're already shredded. Um, and that is accompanied with a decrease in carbohydrates to somewhat ramp up and uh, increase the intramuscular or, uh, intramuscular carbohydrate storage. So basically, like if you can generally store, and this is uh, just off the top of my head, I believe it's 23 grams per kilogram of lean tissue that somebody could store total body glycogen. Um, so 2,300 grams of carbs, if somebody's a hundred pound or a hundred uh, kilogram male, let's say for example. So the people who do like four day carb ups with like a thousand grams of carbs a piece, kind of silly, unless you're training some of that off really hard. 
Um, but that does go up slightly if you do a sort of depletion, we see a depletion of carbohydrates to a, a super compensation increase. You can store slightly more than that. And obviously this is also biologically dependent. So not everybody's the same. Right. 23 is an average, um, which is why practicing is smart. So I generally tailor on the side of caution and I, I'm a little on the uh, smaller end of it. So if you could also break it down this way, 10 to 15 grams per kilogram for the first day of carb up, let's say you do 15 grams for the first day, you see how they're looking. Uh, you can then take that down a little bit. So I might do something like 13 and then 10. Two day carb up. Right. I generally keep it at a two day carb up because you're also bringing training down, which I'll talk about. Uh, you're not burning much off, the activity's coming down, things like that. So yeah, carbohydrates are gonna be, uh, decrease beginning of the week uh, with a ramp up in water and potentially sodium, depending and then an increase in carbohydrates with a leveling off of the water and sodium uh, as you go into the show. Mm -hmm. So if a guy's already shredded, mm -hmm. do you do a carb depletion typically in the early part of the week anyway, or not <laughs> so much? Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on what they were eating before. So like sometimes to get a natural guy really shredded anyway, he's already at like hundred grams of carbs. Maybe I'll just keep him there because by the time you're eating a carb, when you're that freaking lean, uh, the actual mechanism in which you uptake carbohydrates, it's already like ready. It's like basically gimme, 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 gimme. Right. And the second you eat a carb, it's, you're, it's getting stored. So they're already in that state in which they want carbohydrates. So there's no reason to drop people down compensate. to like 20 grams of carbs. Right. It's kind of silly. It's like going, and then I've seen a lot of mishaps with like going from keto to uh, eating carbohydrates again right away, uh, a lot of people respond differently to that process. And you, it might take a little bit of time to go from that uh, ketogenic state to wanting to kind of store carbohydrates again. So it's like, keep it kind of consistent, especially if they're super shredded and they're already really low calorie. Uh, somebody can still lose a bit of fat and they're like, let's just say like 300 grams of carbs still, you could definitely take them down to uh, minimal carbs a lot of people do trace carbs when they're increasing the fats. I just kind of do minimal carbs. I, I don't try to put people in, into that keto state. I don't really think there's any benefit to it. You don't like longevity? <laughs> yeah, keto diet, baby. It'll make you immortal. Yeah, that's what I hear. Uh, so fat, you said something about fat loading has maybe a place. Yeah, potentially has a place just for the intramuscular triglyceride storage. What do you, you typically have? like to have? How many, I forget, I'm a 150 pound natty peak competitor. How much fat am I eating in the week up to the peak, including the peak? So if you're taking the carbs down to that uh, trace amount that I like, or it'll not trace, but like the amount in which you're not keto, but it's pretty freaking low, you're just basically taking the fats up to that, making that person eat sign of kind of like a maintenance, right above maintenance diet. Pause. All week long for the last week is maintenance, ideally? Yeah, ideally for the last, let's say, six, seven days of the peak. You're taking that person and you're putting them in that uh, decreased carb state so they can super compensate later and you're increasing the fats to put them at the maintenance diet because they are deloading with their training and they're reducing activity and all those things. So if you're trying to lose fat still and you're not training hard, then you have potential for muscle loss and you got to get it back and it's just a big mess. Okay. I'll ask you a follow up to that in a bit. That's fine. What happens with water? So water also is kind of a de dependent thing because we're really, really good at kind of uh, the intracellular, extracellular fluid compartments being a very one-to-one -one ratio of what's being excreted. But when you do use water as a diuretic, you will uh, see brief periods in time in which the subcutaneous water is lesser than the uh, water elsewhere. So it's like if you can increase carbs at the same time as you can bring that water down, um, you get that full dry, all that bullshit me and Mike said, look, that's a Friday night situation. And that's more of like a Friday night thing. So it's so, really, it's generally either a slight elevation in their water. And there's, you know, anywhere from people increasing all the way up to like 12 liters, lower than that, depending on their size, depending on the sodium they're taking in, because you don't want to just increase water. I'll talk about that. You can, you know, there's all kinds of stuff, hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, hyponatremia, hypernatremia, all kinds of shit that can go wrong if you're not playing with all this stuff. So I generally just say, if you increase your water, sodium also has to increase a little bit, just so everybody knows. And I wouldn't play with potassium too much, except for having some additional potassium in your carb up sources. Um, but water can be increased by like 1.25 uh, by the beginning of the week. Sodium can come up uh, in conjunction. And then 
about, you know, Thursday, Friday, if the show is Saturday, you're decreasing the water such that it's back down to basically their normal amounts. So they're still diuresing and the carbohydrates can pull in the excess fluid because for every gram of glycogen stored, I believe it's like, they say two point, they used to say 2.7, but that was like rat liver studies. Now they say like three to four grams of water for each gram of carbohydrate. My coach so has been eating weight. rat livers. They have <laughs> literal rat livers. Yeah, it's a long time to harvest yeah, them. Anymore. Probably a fine source of protein, uh, but I, I can't imagine how many rats had to die for you to eat just rat livers. Rats die all the time in the New York subways <laughs> anyway, Jerry. They might as well die for a grand purpose. Well, they're dying at whatever you weigh times one. A lot. Yeah. That sucks. Um, okay, wow, you busted through all those, really. So towards Friday night, water is down to a normal level, not a lot. Mm. Sodium is down to the normal level as well, or a little less than that? Uh, slightly less, generally. Uh, with that with that increase, a lot of that kind of stays around. And then whenever the carbohydrates start coming in, it's pulling a lot of things into the tissue, things are being moved around, and you're kind of drying out a little bit. And you're going to notice that too. Like Even if you reduce your water back down to normal, if you're eating a thousand grams of carbs, you'll actually start to get like that cotton mouth, which is yeah, it's you crazy. Eat, and you're like, why? I'm drinking three liters of water still. Why am I cotton mouth? That's just like a gallon. So, I mean, you're literally still drinking a gallon of water, but you're taking in so many carbohydrates that it's pulling a lot of that into the tissue. And yeah, you feel dehydrated, which is, it's fine. It's okay. Um, you but, don't overdo the water then. Right. You're not overdoing you're just, it, but right. you're not taking it so, so you go to bed low. a little thirsty. Yeah. Wake up in your shredsville. Basically. And then what do you typically like to have athletes eat before they step on stage? Or like, let's say I wake up at 8 a.m. for my touch-up tan, and then I'm on stage, uh, hopefully anywhere between 11 and 1. So you're you're kind of waking up and assessing the physique. And these things are okay with natural competitors. Again, I'll just say this with enhanced competitors, is much harder. And you, you kind of have to stick with a plan and not try to do anything drastic at the last second because um, these processes just like are already in play and they're already good. They have to play themselves out. Well, with naturals, it's a little uh, different. <laughs> I'm used to enhanced shit working like this. Mm -hmm. I'm at the hotel Wednesday through Saturday. Great. I'm eating meals. I'm doing a lot of hotel lighting posing because mm -hmm. I envision myself in first place. I right, do the course, quarter turns. No stone left unturned. Uh -huh. I say that to yeah, myself absolutely. a lot. Every, yep, yep. And then generally my coach wants pictures of me completely naked Great. every five minutes. Sounds good coach. Because he, he really can make the manipulations. He sees the little mm -hmm. coming in and he goes, how many grams of carbs do you just eat? Yeah. 97. He's like, cut it to 95, <laughs> throw up two grams of carbs. That's how I'm used to it. <laughs> now, with carbs. dedicated coaches, they're there in the hotel room with me watching yeah. me naked. That's very nice. As I it's eat, very kind of them. pose, sleep. Defecate, shower, defecate again. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. It's yeah. good. That's good. That's uh, a good coach. Yeah. For, well, you know, it's a it's a nice gesture, and I think that they think they're doing something for the client. But uh, again, these processes take time in biology, and they're already set in motion. Especially if you did something such as increase your water, there's a diuretic response that has to occur, and until it's done occurring, nothing else you do is gonna fucking matter. So if you increase your water and you do a sharp drop off, and then you're like, oh, no, 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 scratch that. We need more water. Well, you're still going to continue to diurese. And then if you add that water back in and you don't manipulate anything else, you might look watery. Yeah. You might look like shit. Because your body freaked out and then it's like, oh, water. We'll just hold yeah, this exactly. for a while. Yeah, exactly. 100%. And I mean, I've done it to myself. So it's not like it's they're doing anything bad, but they're also probably not doing anything except causing excess stress for the client because they're like, hey, I need pictures now. I need them in two hours. I need them again. I need, it's just like set the plan and play. Kind of like, again, read that paper. Uh, practice a peak yourself like three, four weeks out, maybe during your your last deload before the peak week. Um, see how you do. Don't do anything drastic. And then you have a general outline set by principles that you can follow. And if you do notice that things are kind of like, oh, I'm a little flat, even though last time I had a thousand grams carbs on that first day, I woke up this time because you're going to be leaner and you're going to have less fat. I woke up this time and I'm like, eh, I look a little shittier. So maybe that then you can up your carbohydrates just a little more on that second day of carving up. But really, those are the types of manipulations you'd be making, not like every two hours. OK, well, let's go to a cup now, now a half cup, now a cup of rice, now a quarter of a cup of rice. Like That's just, just it's like have something in play. There's a you can make your own little algorithm. There's a nice math. 
played out for you. I've said a lot of numbers in this, this little talk, and you can even see them listed again in the paper and in other places, and it works. It's physiology. So you like to go by number. Absolutely. What do you think about this? I like my carb <laughs> peak because, like, once some carbs hit your blood, you feel good. Yeah. And then I like to think I'm done with numbers. I'm just eating a lot of carbs mm -hmm. and I'm just going. Mm -hmm. I legit mean like this level I'm at, I'm hanging out with Trix Rabbit and Captain Crunch and motherfuckers both for real in my room. What about uh, the, the captain, the Coco guy? I don't like that guy. Yeah, me, he's kind of good. Tony the Tiger comes through and you know Tony's got that energy. That's that. It's That's great. that white on white. It Tony is, always brings that white. He you, does. What the hell do you think frosting's made of? Sure Frosted does. flakes. <laughs> in any case... I don't even know. Sometimes I miss the show because I'm partying so hard with my boys. That's not a good way to peak. I've had clients miss the show. You've had clients miss the show? Dylan. Dylan missed the show. Dylan. Dylan's not something. He actually smart. didn't. He didn't. That's Somebody missed it for him. Yeah, he was standing there on the side like, can I just go on stage? And so the, the story is Dylan went to a show and he was pumping up and one of the ushers was like, hey, this is actually this hallway is the hallway for pumping up. And he's like, are you sure? They're like, yes, I'm an usher. Go. And he just stood there and pumped up for a long time. And he's like, gee whiz, it's been a while. Next time he checked, the show was like almost over. And yeah, next time he checked, class. his class was already on the stage and he walks over. There's only four guys besides him. And he's like, can I just go out there? Because they're like literally in their like mandatory poses. And the guy goes, no. What a dick. <laughs> is that guy fired? He should be. It makes the IPE look bad, but that, that's that's why we're here to talk that shit. That's right? my own opinion. <laughs> All right. These opinions are neutral as far as Renaissance periodization. Right. I'm not going to say Renaissance periodization <laughs> doesn't agree with Jared or does agree. Because, you know, sometimes companies are like, we do we, we do not, you know what I'm saying? These aren't our opinions. The, maybe these might be our opinions, but maybe they're not. Maybe, maybe not. All right. But they are mine. Training taper. Mm-hmm. I personally have the opinion that I go hard every day. Right on, on Friday night, I'm at the gym trying to put on a little bit more muscle. And you wake up flat every time. I win every time. Where are your trophies, man? With hashtag win. It's a mindset. <laughs> it's not really winning. Oh, so you beat your your previous best. I'm an entrepreneur. That's what some people do. They just go to beat their previous best. Some people do that. Kill your clone. Some Ethan Suplee says that. He's an actor. He's famous in Hollywood. <laughs> it's very true. What do you know? <laughs> do you like guys to train hard into a show? When do you pull the plug on training and have them go to deload ideally? So deload should occur at six, seven days out. Uh, you start the deload process. You can still have one, two hard sets per body part those first couple of days. Um, ideally, you're not causing much muscle damage because muscle damage can actually inhibit the uptake of glycogen. Um, so don't be sore. Don't be sore. Yeah. If you're sore Friday and you're trying to get your chest to fill out, like you're an idiot. It can be tough. It can be very, very tough. Um, you might also be an idiot. You general, might also be an idiot, but if you're a good coach. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. He can pull the string on you. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so if you're in there going crazy, um, I've seen guys who felt like what their issue was was they overdid it on the carbs. So they go to the gym and they actually train hard, which will make you even more sore because now you have the nutrients to cause even more damage and you kind of feel it a little more. So a lot of guys, they'll try to burn off the extra glycogen because of that. Uh, really, usually it's a sodium or water issue when that happens because it's hard to spill over via carbohydrate if you're not eating excessive sodium sources. Like I've overdone the 23 gram per kilogram thing before many, like probably a few times. <laughs> um, I remember eating 1500 and 1500 and then uh, the day of, I even had like another 500 because the show was at nighttime. So it was quite a bit of carbohydrates. Um, but my water and sodium were tapered off. And it was kind of, I was just getting more and more cotton mouth. And I was like. Was this nationals? Uh, nationals happened. Yeah. Definitely happened at nationals. You were dry as fuck. Yeah. I was very dry at nationals. It was nice. It was good. Do you remember? I, we didn't know each other back then. Yeah, yeah. I came up to you backstage. I was like, bro. Bro, you're glutes, dude. I'm not going to say no homo because I don't mean that at all. You're dry, bro. <laughs> I was like, thanks, man. Here's my number. Hit me up after the show because no homo or not. I don't do numbers. I only do Snapchat. Oh, shit. I don't have that app. Did I get it? No, we probably That's didn't. That's why we never up. hooked up. All right. Um, but yeah, so uh, don't be sore. Um, the last day, Friday, probably wouldn't train at all. You can do some posing uh, to, just because you're going to be eating a lot of carbohydrates. So you want to do a little bit of something. Keep activity up a tad. Uh, don't stress about having to walk around the hotel and shit. Like it's fine. We all have to do it. Everybody's going to check-ins and coming back to their room and doing whatever. So don't freak out because you're not going to be 
Like when people were like, put your feet up, man. Just put them up, put them up, put them up. It's like, okay, whatever, dude. Like you ate a bunch of fucking carbs and you just reduced all the cortisol that you had accumulated through that, the entire mesa cycle before because you had so much food, you had a bunch of water, you're fucking feeling great. So don't stress about little shit like that. Like it's not a big deal. And the amount of activity you're doing that day as opposed to a week ago, the Saturday before this Saturday, when you were going fucking hard doing an hour and a half of cardio is very minimal and you're going to be fine. So don't stress. That's a big thing. You ready for a mind fuck? Mind fuck me, dog. If you tell me not to stress about little shit. Little stress. And I start stressing about, am I stressing about little shit? It's a fucking closed loop. I fucking do that. I do that shit. How do you pull away? Uh, you take a fucking Benadryl Yo. and you go to sleep. <laughs> what about like 10 Zannies? Or if you're into the uh, cannabis scene, there you go. But no, anything about that. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Ideally, let's say you got a guy coming in real sharp. Mm -hmm. Do you want him to sort of relax that last week diet wise and stay in maintenance? Mm -hmm. Or do you ever make the executive decision to say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're cutting you up, cardio, everything, get you that last little bit of fat loss? Or is that last week, last fit fat loss, the cortisol uh, stress response is just not worth it? Yeah, it could it could definitely be not worth it. It could And it could also take that guy who is super sharp but could be a little more sharp. It could give him that last bit of fat loss. Um, again, especially when special sports ups are in play. Let's say Natty. Natty only. Natty this only. video is called Natty Peak. Right. Motherfucker just wants to talk about drugs. Oh, God damn drugs guy. You know what makes Natty Peak better? If you take drugs! <laughs> uh, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, you could... Take the first couple of days and try to lose a little bit more fat. But ideally, you want to be in a circumstance where you're pretty relaxed. Um, during the depletion, I sometimes don't do the uh, fat load. So they will be a deficit still for the first couple of days. No. And then they're coming up. Um, so, they, yeah, you could use that last quarter of peak week to lose a little bit of fat. After that, because you are deloading, again, around that time, the deload volume is going down even more. And you're doing even less training, so it's probably time to go ahead and take them the calories to maintenance and uh, reduce some stress. Super. And then cardio down. Yeah, I think second to last. Cardio, thing. Go down. cardio has to go down. For sure. So Wednesday, time to cool the uh, the whole deal. Hundred percent. Monday, Tuesday, maybe you're burning, but yeah. Wednesday you're you're fucking. Hundred percent. And like if you do end up eating some carbohydrates, like you're like, eh, we're looking good. Uh, the fat load went pretty well. And Wednesday you want to eat like you know a, a minor carb up day. It's, it's probably fine in most circumstances. Um, I do like to incorporate a bit of like a moving around slash pump up style of, of training during like Wednesday, Thursday. So they're just kind of doing like two or three sets per body part per week, like six RIR. Because that stimulates glycogen up. Exactly. And I mean, like I said, you're already in the, that state in which that mechanism, specifically it's a glute mechanism, it's, it's already kind of ready to push and shuttle these carbs, but doing some activity helps even more and it actually stimulates that process a little bit better. So doing some sort of pump up uh, workouts, not a bad idea. I'm writing something down because I'm about to ask you some shit. Ask me some shit, and I'm ready for it. Okay. So the three things. One. You wrote down three things just now? Good job, dude. I wrote down two. Wait. I oh, know. Oi, Ashkenazi <laughs> brain, eh? It wikes. <laughs> the Ashkenazi brain does two things incredibly well. It makes you a fucking genius and gives you radical anxiety. I don't even know where I am right now. The uh, second one sounds terrible. It is. Yeah. The gift and the curse. Yeah, so I got the white trash, like whatever, you know? Eh. <laughs> whatever. Let me get I'm a here. cigarette and I'm fine. I'm here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Three mistakes in peaking naturals that you see that grind your gears, Jared. And I know you got gears and I know your shit is all down <laughs> up because you're pissed daily. This one is going to be, I don't know if it's number one, but it's going to be something cool to add because we didn't talk about supplements. Uh -huh. People taking GDAs. Glucose things, disposal. Agents. Agents. Um, things of that nature like berberine, other things like uh, all these companies have like Slin is literally the name of one. That's so funny. I'm just like, Jesus Christ. I'm drug free, bro. I take yeah, a Naturals want to do everything possible to be not natural, but just claim they're natty and be like prideful. It's insane. Um, <laughs> it's very irritating. It's funny. I, even when I was a natural, that shit pissed Here's me my off. natty stack. Yeah, even when what? I was natural. I was like, okay, so you take how many grams of creatine per week? And yeah. you, okay, cool. Creatine Competitive edge. And flowers. <laughs> um, so, one, these. Supplements are not studied well. 
they've not been around very long, and they could potentially be dangerous. Uh, they could potentially damage your liver. They could potentially do a lot of things that we don't know. You're telling me my GDA from Psycho Labs <laughs> hasn't been empirically validated? <laughs> correct. News to me. <laughs> yeah, correct. And some of them might actually have some form, low-level form of like metformin in them or something. And then like, good luck to your natty status, baby. Like, really? My lab called Imprisoned Physiques <laughs> with a Z? That's not as like lying to me? Right. <laughs> they might be lying to you. Sponsored or not, baby. All right. <laughs> so don't take weird supplements. So weird supplements to push or shunt or whatever you think it's doing with carbohydrates. <laughs> it doesn't push nor shunt. <laughs> like, it's the same thing, by the way, and it doesn't either. Right. It doesn't either of those things. Um, yeah, just stop. Stop doing that. Stop. Uh, another thing that we maybe have seen at shows, what about like pump up stuff? Pump up stuff. Um, I want to start early pumping up. I like over, to start four overly hours pumping early. Is, overly pumping is very silly. Again, you burn glycogen. If you start four hours early, good luck getting a pump on stage. Um. Generally, less is more when it comes to pumping up. Like if you see the class before you lining up to go on stage and they go on stage, now they're lining your class up, start to pump. Like that's probably fine. Do some pushups, sip on a Gatorade because it's a fast GI carb. And by the time you hit stage, that's in 10, 15 minutes, that's going to actually make you look a little more veiny. You're going to look a little more full and you're going to hold the poses better. And you're going to look, you're going to actually fill out even more on stage. So all the guys that are fading because they were pumping up for 35 minutes before, uh, you're going to be getting sharper. It's I, it's every fucking time. Every time. I'll see guys, my guys get moved to the, <laughs> they're here, and then the guy in the middle fades, and my guy goes, bloop, there you go. You win. Congratulations. Mario style on top yeah, of Yeah, just that. literally jumps over everybody, and he's a turtle, turns into a turtle shell, explodes, and that's it. The guy dies right there on stage. That better be like the first thing <laughs> Scott, the video guy, puts into the, <laughs> this better be the first thing we talk about. <laughs> what the fuck? Are they talking about Super Mario Brothers? <laughs> Sorry, for those of you born after the year 2000, Super Reddit Brothers, what a dumbass game these motherfuckers are playing. I will get to that in a sec. Um, um, another yeah. mistake. One more mistake. One more mistake for natural competitors. Again, like, like I told you guys, the water and sodium and things of that nature are fairly consistent. I will see uh, coaches start to taper sodium and water down like starting Tuesday. And there will be at no water the day of – no sodium the, the Friday, no water, no sodium, and like trying to quote unquote dry them out. But it's like it's a natural competitor. They don't have these weird compounds that cause extra uh, a water storage. So that's not something you generally need to do with a natural person. Um, when you see that kind of stuff with enhanced people, it's because they're on different kinds of compounds and different kinds of compounds cause different effects inside of each person. And and it's, it's even intra and inter-individual. So it's like – Stop trying to pull water by literally pulling out sodium and water because it just makes you look worse. The subcutaneous water is actually retained because there's like uh, an aldosterone loop that's going on and the cortisol increases and you actually look worse. So stop trying to pull out water for natural competitors. Stop trying to pull out sodium. So if you're a natty competitor and you got to do something crazy in peak week to get extra shredded, like if you're not shredded already, you're happy pretty much fucked yeah it's like it's not water bro it's not it's not worth it <laughs> yeah it's not water it's all <laughs> wait till we pull this water. water for me it's not water everyone else is fat right yeah for you it's definitely you're, you're just water right now man also fat no, I mean, you're, you're water. i'm ready to go on stage you're fucking ready. i'm peeled yeah, i'm dude. too lean look you look can look say like your wrist veins look at your wrist yeah. veins it's freaky the judges are like yeah. listen we knew it's a healthy yeah. federation you got a vein on top of your hand <sighs> motherfuckers ever seen shit like that all right, check this out. Two more questions, and then we uh, wrap up the video. Let's do it. You just won nationals and got your pro card. Not literally, but I'm setting up a scenario. Okay. What's your go-to meal? Diet's over, bro. What are we eating, Jared? Oh, boy. <laughs> don't, wanna, say, rant, huh? don't say lady parts. Uh, I think viewing – the competitive bodybuilding experience in this light is potentially hazardous to your psychological health. I'll put it that way. Uh, that's a lot of big words I don't understand. <laughs> Does that mean pancake or burger? <laughs> it means both. Water, burger, pancake, dip in there, shove it down your throat. All right. I got a, just a patty uh -huh. and just a pancake on a plate. I pour water over them shits and I eat it. Perfect. That's what I would do. <laughs> so why are you so against the focusing on the cheat meal right after the show? I'm against that. I'm against uh, refeeds for similar reasons. Um, I just think that when you're ingraining these behaviors of like. Did you say grain? 
and graining. We're sponsored by Big Grain. We're so. sponsored by Big Grain, Big Farmer too. These patterns yeah, of binging and then uh, going back into a deficit and then binging, it's it's not good and it actually is sort of mimicking uh, like eating disorder style behavior in people. So if your big thing is that you were so fucking hungry the entire prep that the, la the only thing you think about was like the cheat meal at the end, I have no idea why you're doing this to yourself. And I think it's something that you should either one, reassess your entire plan. Um, two, look into like FPRH and how they can help you. There's you probably a video on FPRH. Food palatability reward hypothesis. We have a whole video on anti-hunger strategies that will be out. Watch that probably. video. It's probably very smart. And if you're doing anything outside of that or your coach wants you to like do weird shit like continue eating cereal. Cereal is great, like a post-training thing for like a high GI source. But if you're like continue to eat cereal like four weeks out, it's probably a bad idea. It's making you really sugary. Fun. It's making you hungry as hell. So if you are getting to the state in which you're just like excessively hungry and your coach is just telling you this is what it takes, you know, maybe you recess. Uh, <laughs> if you are, you're going to be hungry. I'm not lying. I'm not going to say you're not. But if you can withstand a 16-week contest prep diet, you can withstand not only holding your hand in victory, but also holding out for another like week, slowly increase your calories that night. You'll have like some pretty clean carbohydrate sources. It's not like you didn't just carb up with fucking thousand grams of carbs the last two days. Like, shouldn't that be enough? So eat good, clean, whole foods. Eat good, clean, whole foods for the next week if you can. And even if that's like, here you go, have at it. Here's some good, clean, whole foods. Eat up, drink a fucking glass of water first, have your vegetables first, and then try to eat as many clean carbs as you can. I promise you, vegetables. I promise you, it's not a lot. <laughs> You can't eat a lot of clean carbs after that. No, you can't. So do that a few times a day. Have like, you know, have that muffin that you were wanting. Maybe eat a cookie. Um, and then just kind of like try to stay on track on diet. Like I'm also not a fan of excessive rebound, like rebound show, like uh, what do they call it? Reverse dieting bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan of that either. Uh, the traditional sense of reverse dieting was literally like adding in a few calories a day so that you stayed super lean and you could quote unquote get the most out of it but you're getting less out of it because you're staying below 8% body fat and you're not even putting back the lean tissue on that you lost yet. So it's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> so I'm not a fan of a crazy reverse dieting, but I'm not a fan of just like stuffing your face with a bunch of bullshit and ingraining that poor behavior pattern into you. So you're saying go to maintenance. Go to maintenance, go to maintenance, eat a bunch of clean carbs. Uh, for most people, like 150 pound man, maintenance carbs is probably like 300, 350 carbs anyway. Yeah, so yeah. there you go, boom. And then afterwards, when you're not super hungry anymore, a week later, you go out with your significant other to a restaurant and yeah, just totally. have a nice meal. Totally. You can enjoy it without being like psychotic about yeah, it. Yeah, so just like tell yourself at the start of the diet, this diet lasts, my show's in 15 weeks and this diet lasts 16. Yo, that's some galaxy brain shit. Yeah, just, that's it. To literally quote Menno Henselman's, and I kid you not, <laughs> and I'm not well, going to say I, what I, I said, <laughs> but Menno looked at me you and goes, some. yo, that's some Einstein shit right there. <laughs> and I forever knew that I was smart because if Menno thinks I'm Einstein, that's what I got out of it. <laughs> Last question, Jared, before we let you go off to your white trash existence. Thank you so much. Reddit tells me your haircut is stupid and by extension, so are you. Feel free to address the crowd. I'm stupid because of my haircut. Your haircut implies a degree of stupidity that is you know, obvious. It's kind of like if I see someone in with like teeth. pink and purple and green hair, they like attention. In my teeth too. Your teeth are yeah. like if someone just drank Drano for the first 15 years of their life. My, my parent might have. I don't Ooh, know. Yeah, right. <laughs> Here, oh, I'm not going to say the joke. I was going to say so many <laughs> terrible things. Oh, fuck me. Uh, Hashtag respect. Unborn how many life. Reddit people do you think are also YouTube subscribers? All of them? A lot. All of them? That's half half our fucking sub base is Redditors. Uh, what's the no one, offense, fellas. What's the one guy Scott really, 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 really likes? We can't mention names on here. Fuck. We're going to get sued. But it's not a real name. He's not a real That's a we fake, love fake name. Don't let Jerry talk that shit. We love you. He's Stay. On right now talking shit on my hair. Loves talking shit about you because you ain't <laughs> nothing but a little bitch. Why don't you defend yourself? Uh, I'm just not going to. I have this haircut for the simple fact that you guys keep talking shit on it. This fucking That's thing would have been shaved long ago. Long time ago. Fuel for the haters. It's literally fuel. I love it. You guys are so pissed. Girls don't talk to you with hair like that, right? Yeah, no, I'd never, ever talk to females. <laughs> if you, if I was a girl, what would you say to me? <laughs> Look at my hair. It's so stupid. I want to have sex with you. Bingo. That's exactly how it works. Folks, learn how to pick up girls exactly like that for our Pick Up Girls with Jared and Mike DVD hitting the streets. Not, that's right, streets, not stores. 
Next month, nineteen ninety nine per DVD. Just one on the other one on the other side. Two yeah. DVDs, forty nine ninety nine total. Peace. Hey, I'll wait for the video. Just so you guys know, if I did miss anything uh, or you want to know more about something, I'm always available for qu for questions. Um, where? I'll, also, I'll tell you where. Also, again, the paper. Go look at the paper. It's really good. Maybe our camera guy can put that link in. The, Maybe our camera guy will remember to put the link. Put in. the link in the bottom, or just flash it up on the screen Doesn't or whatever. Do research. Um, and then uh, Dr. Scott Stevenson actually went and did a podcast with Steve Hall about the paper. Two great which people. Which is super good. Um, so, yeah, go over to Revive Stronger. Check out that podcast. Check out the paper. Check out uh, – there are multiple other papers that have been done by, like, Eric Helms did one a long time ago, I believe. He's a competitor. Don't mention it. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> Eric Shelms. <laughs> Shilms. Yeah. <laughs> Shilling for Big <laughs> Eric. Big Eric. New Zealand. Oh. He's probably in his house right now, huh? Quarantined. Jesus Christ. Folks, don't quarantine your gains. Don't quarantine your gains. See you next time.